analyzing how I process information, you know, and I think that is what's the truth about most artists, is once you get past all the preconceived notions about what art is, you, you make things because it's what motivates you and how you see the world. I see the world as a set of rules and, and, and from a very psychological perspective, and I was interested in the way that it, Sierra told me an experience she had, like that experience. I would want to hear it from her perspective because it would shift how I perceived that moment. Or if, if, um, if somebody told me a story, I would want to glean out of it everything I could to apply to my life and how I would learn from it. And so then in that way things become transformative um, and things start to almost become immortal. You know, memories or thoughts or ideas, you know. And so I was interested in that and I, I write so much, I thought, well maybe I'll start just sewing forms and just do one every day for like that part of the day. And I, I did, thought of it like I would a drawing. You know, if you're just kind of doodling or whatever. Um, we are in the same, we're, we're in the same grad program together. I'm still in the program. And we're very, very different people. And I think for a long time we just really didn't understand each other. Or on the outside we're very different people. But, you know, when we really got to know each other we have a lot more in common than I thought. But when she did this piece, I kind of, it allowed me this window into her weirdness. <laughs> that I was just like, you know, this girl is really crazy and cool. I had no idea. <laughs> and it was what I what attracted to me about this was the passive aggressive nature of these of these pieces. I thought it was nice to like they, very passive aggressive. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that you had no idea. I had no idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it did. But, you know, but this piece really, like, got the ball rolling for me and Jen. To um, I moved here in 2007 to go to grad school at SUNY, basically fleeing my hometown. Um, I've always been an object maker. I started out um, going to school for sculpture, doing a lot of, like, traditional sculpture. Like, I did a lot of bronze casting and iron casting and hand-built ceramics. But there were always kind of, like, these monstrous, monstrous figures that were always somehow related to myself and my own life and uh, just female bodies. Um, one thing, my mom was raised in a very stereotypically abusive Catholic family. And so I was raised very anti-Catholic, very anti-organized religion of any kind. So of course I was fascinated with it. But it was from a very outside kind of view. You know, I had no connection to it. So it was for me, it was just all about this really amazingly vivid and grotesque imagery. And it's like, I love like the gold leaf and the vivid colors and the compositions, but like the gore and, and horror of it, I, it's just, just captivating. So, um, and it's also, it's also, you know, coming from a background like that and having no real spiritual or religious roots, especially as I'm getting older, it's something that I find myself searching for in kind of my weird backwards way, I guess. Um, and it's also a lot about, I'm really interested in, um, the uh, old school tattoo design revival and people getting these like old Sailor Jerry um, tattoo designs like with anchors and stuff and, and sparrows or swallows and they have no real like history or meaning to the people who are getting these images so they kind of become a symbol of a tattoo and that is just, <laughs> that is so exciting and interesting to me. I mean contemporary art, there's no idea do what you do and it's too if it's too cute. You know, my husband's a piece of trans and he's got photographs. You know, like airbrush is one and stuff. So yeah. I'm a big fan forever of Leonardo da Vinci. Um I I think that that there is an intrinsic link between art and nature that should not be uh, discounted ever um, in the world around us.